Hello everybody, my name is Michael Septerman and welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Michael and I do everything to do with Blender, 3D art, and design. Today, we will be learning how to model this mimic here in Blender 3.4. It looks like something straight out of Dungeons & Dragons or even Harry Potter. A few things that I would like to note before we get into the tutorial today is that firstly, I am in the Cycles Render Engine with 256 samples in the viewport and 1024 samples in the render. Additionally, if you would like to follow my tutorial in a one-to-one -one fashion, there are two add-ons that you need to enable in your Blender preferences. The first is Node Wrangler, which is a built-in add-on that comes included with Blender. And the second one is Bool Tools, which I will link down in the description below for you to download for free and install into your Blender application. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by highlighting all the uh, meshes and deleting them and let's add in our cube. Let's begin by blocking out the general chest shape that we would like. So let's just move this up. Let's scale it on the S axis and scale it. And let's go into edit mode and go into face select and just bring it down a little. And let's go into our modifiers tab here on the right and let's add a bevel modifier. Uh, and let's increase the segments to 10 and reduce the amount to something like 0.4 and then right click shade smooth. Uh, so that's going to be the general layout of our chest. Let's tab back into edit mode, click on the top face with face select, press I to inset and press E to extrude down like that. So then we will have the inside of our chest. As you may have noticed here that there is some weird artifacting going on in the corners of our model and that is due to the bevel modifier. So what we can do is we can go into geometry and change the miter outer from sharp to arc and that should fix the problems that we were facing. Okay, so now we have uh, the general shape of our chest. Let's add in a lid. So shift A mesh, let's take a cylinder. R and rotate 90 degrees on the x-axis and rotate RZ 90 degrees on the z-axis. Let's go into front orthographic view and press S and X to scale on the x-axis. And now let's go into x-ray mode on the top right here and tab into edit mode on vertex select. And let's just highlight these bottom vertices, press X to delete. So now we kind of have the lid of the chest. Let's just highlight these using Alt and click and press F to fill and do the same for the other side. Okay. Now let's add again, let's add the bevel modifier, increasing the segments to 10 and just increasing it to something like 0.4 shade smooth. And let's also add a solidify modifier and pull that above the bevel modifier in order to give our lid some depth and remember to change the geometry of the miter outer to arc and just like that we have modeled the basic shape of our chest in which our mimic will be living in so let's edit the chest to look a little bit more like a real fantasy chest and add a little bit more details so starting with the bottom let's tab into edit mode let's press Control r to bring in a loop cut and press right click to keep it in place and let's go into x-ray mode and in edit mode just highlight these vertices press x and click to delete and let's add in a mirror modifier and pull it above and enable clipping and this way we can edit the right side of the mesh and it will affect the left side as well so what we should be doing here is we're going to be adding some metal handles let's click these two and press I to inset and let's click here and press I to inset the same way actually let's have that a little thicker so again I to inset here I to inset okay and let's just click this these edges by holding alt and left alt shift and left click press alt and E to extrude the faces along the normals and just press S to have proportional scaling enabled. So just like that, we have the metal parts of our chest already done. Okay, that's looking quite good. Let's just scale this back a bit down. And now let's do the same for the top. 
So again, let's take these two faces, press I to inset, and let's alt click the loop here and press I to inset. And let's just shift and alt shift click this, alt shift click this, and alt shift click this. And again, alt E, extrude faces along normals, press S for proportional scaling. And let's just scale it up a little. And just like that, we have our chest. And at this point, we should be making a few adjustments in order to make sure that everything looks okay. So let's click this here and let's click this here. Let's press GZ to bring them up. And inside our mesh here, uh, that should be okay. Right click shade smooth. And we have the basis of our chest. Uh, at this point, we can change uh, a little bit of the model to whatever we'd like. So I'm going to SZ this to make the lid a little taller. And then uh, let's just press R and X to open the lid. And then let's just position that in such a way that it looks like uh, the mimic is opening its mouth. Just like that. Okay. Uh, after that, let's add the keyhole in which... Um, our chest will be locked. So shift A, let's add in a cube. Let's scale it down. Scale it down on the Y axis. Let's scale it up. And let's put it in the middle of the chest like that. Let's add in a bevel modifier. Again, increasing the segments to 10 and just lowering the amount to something like that. Shade smooth. And now we have the padded part of the lock. So this is where uh, our add-on bool tools is going to come in handy. So let's shift A, let's add in another cube, and we're going to basically cut a keyhole in this square here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to scale this down, and let's kind of model the general shape of a keyhole here. So let's press E to extrude, and press Control B to bevel, and let's scroll up. Something like that. Let's just extrude this down a little as well. Let's press Alt click with edge select here and press S to bring it down. And going back to face select, let's select the bottom and let's press S, scale it up. Uh, and press SZ to scale it up like that. So it looks like a keyhole. Let's add a modifier. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier. And back in this, let's press Control R to add some loop cuts. Uh, right click shade smooth and we have a key shaped hole. Let's move it closer to the padlock and let's just kind of play around with it to get the right shape. And now click the keyhole we just made and click the square that we have made earlier and press Control minus. Uh, and we can just adjust it a little bit to make it more There we go make it a little bit cleaner looking And as you can see we have the bull tool cube 002 here added and just like that uh, You can see that we have cut a keyhole into the padlock on the chest Okay so that is the basic chest model done. And now we can move on to adding the mimic features such as the teeth, the tongue, and of course the eyes. Let's start adding the features that's going to turn this chest from a chest into a mimic. So first things first, let's add the teeth because that's going to be the easiest to do. Let's shift A, let's add in a cube here and let's just kind of move it along the rim of the chest and scale it down. What we're going to do is we're going to be adding a subdivision modifier and reducing the levels to one. Let's tap into edit mode here and you can see it still allows us to edit this uh, as if it were a cube. So let's press E to extrude. Let's press S to scale it down. And again, let's bring this up and let's press E to extrude here. Just a little like that. And let's take the edge select here. Let's select this edge, press S to scale it down a little. 
and going back to face select let's select the top of the teeth rotate it a little and just press gx to kind of bring it into the middle there so let's have like one big tooth here and let's, let's just oops let's just rotate it in like that and let's add in a mirror modifier on top of the subdivision and just click the chest so now it looks like it has teeth on either side now obviously a mimic wouldn't be very scary with just two front teeth so let's add in some more teeth for this monster so clicking this let's press shift d and right click let's scale the te new teeth down a little bit gx to move it to the right on the x-axis uh, and let's rotate it a little like that and now let's add in a lot of teeth at the same time so how do we do that let's click the smaller tooth go to add modifier and let's add an array modifier and let's add that uh, above the mirror and the subdivision modifier so with this we can add as many teeth as we'd like without having to actually create any new mesh so let's reduce the factor maybe something like 0.95 is good let's gz to bring this up and let's have something like that okay so although it looks a bit strange from the inside from the outside we can see that the teeth look pretty good let's just um, rotate it a bit like that to get straighter looking teeth and yeah let's just copy this and place it on the top part of the chest as well so shift d r z one uh, r x 180 to mirror it on x-axis bring it in and let's do the same for the large set of teeth here our x180 let's just gz to bring it up and gy to bring it behind so now from going from a buck tooth mimic we have something that looks quite scary and quite intimidating if you would like we could also add teeth on the side but i actually just like the teeth on the front and with that i think that the mimic needs slightly more teeth so let's click the array of teeth here and press shift d to duplicate it again and g y to move it back let's reduce the factor here of the array so it looks uh so there's a little bit of an offset between the front teeth and the back teeth maybe let's do 0 0.8 uh no 0 0.85 was nice and again let's do the same shift d our x180 and let's just bring it up and gy to bring it back and let's see it from the front yeah it looks pretty good something like that and now we have a mimic with quite the intimidating set of teeth remember to right click everything and shade smooth mm, and let's increase the number of subdivisions from one to two and just like that, we have turned a cube mesh into a set of teeth. Well, two sets of teeth to be exact. Okay, and again, a mimic wouldn't be a mimic without its long red or purple tongue. So let's do that. Let's add a tongue for this mimic. Let's press Shift A, and let's add in a UV sphere, and let's press R x 90 degrees to rotate 90 degrees on the x-axis we're going to modify this sphere into a mimic's tongue so here's how we're going to do that first things first let's add a subdivision modifier and reduce the viewports to uh the levels viewports and render to one let's tab into edit mode here and let's go to vertex select and let's just click the one vertex in the front here press o to enable proportional editing or even you can click it up here and let's press g and you can see a circle now when we move and that is how much of the mesh is going to be affected so from this vertex let's just reduce the proportional editing to something like that let's just pull the tongue out like that and i know it's looking a little weird right now but don't worry we'll fix it 
So now the tongue needs to go above the teeth. So let's alt click this loop here, press GZ, still in proportional editing and bring it up like that. With this point in the front again being our main driver, let's just reduce that and bring it down. And let's flatten this whole thing so it doesn't look like such a fat tongue. So in object mode, let's press S and Z to flatten the tongue and let's bring it up like that. Uh, and let's again bring more of this tongue out, up and down. Now we can bring this up like that. And this is kind of going off to the side. So let's bring it back there. Bring it back like that. Um, and let's scale this down on the Z axis. And again, you can just play with the tongue however you would like uh, until you get a shape that you feel like you are satisfied with. So uh, I'm going to keep playing with this until uh, I get a shape that I think is going to be good. Okay, and just like that, I think this is a shape that I'm okay with. And let's kind of like do something about the point here. Let's get out of proportional editing and let's just bring it in a little like that. Let's add a loop cut and let's again, let's take these vertices up front and just flatten it a little bit like that. And of course, let's right click and shade smooth and let's increase the number of subdivisions. something like that and just like that you've created your mimic's tongue remember to have the tongue kind of droop inside of the chest like this even though if it's floating right now that's all right just make sure that part of it is inside of the chest so from the front it kind of looks like that the tongue is coming from inside of the mimic again let's just increase this a little bit and um again feel free to always come back to the tongue later and just play around with it and change and improve design as much as you would like uh yeah and i think i'm going to leave it at that for now uh, maybe i will go and edit it in between shots later just to you know make it more perfect make it a little look a little bit more threatening even though i don't know this seems pretty threatening to me already okay and just like that we have completed the tongue like that okay so now let's add in uh, a set of eyes uh just so you know because mimics typically well some mimics have eyes some mimics don't have eyes but let's add some eyes onto the top of our chest for our mimic get a uv sphere again our x 90 degrees and let's just add a subdivision surface modifier shade smooth and let's just scatter them around i kind of like to have mimics with more than you know more than two eyes because i think that looks a little bit more unnatural so let's add a mirror modifier and just click the top of the chest here and oh before i forgot the reason your sphere is coming out here is because we haven't applied any of uh location scale and rotation of the cylinder here so let's just press Control a and like all transforms so that's a very cute looking mimic right now so what we're going to do is we're going to press shift d and add another set of eyes like that something like that and just like that we have a very intimidating looking chest mimic straight out of the pages of dungeons and dragons okay so now let's texture this model that we just made to make it look a little bit more realistic and really make it scary and pop out Okay, so let's get to texturing the Mimic. So let's just go up to the top left here and pull a tab out. Uh, and let's go into the shader editor here. Uh, and let's first start by texturing the wooden parts of the chest. Uh, and let's go into the render view here and let's press Shift A and let's add in an area light just like we always do, just so we can see what we're doing. Let's just increase that to 750. Okay, so let's click the bottom half of the chest and let's add a new material and call it wood. 
and let's just create a simple wood texture here so scroll in here okay so let's add a musgrave texture and let's add in a noise texture Okay, and let's just connect the height of the Musgrave texture into the noise texture vector and let's add in mapping and texture coordinates by pressing Ctrl T. Um, and let's add in a bump. Put that into the normal, put the factor into the bump height. Uh, let's adjust this a little so it looks a little bit more like wood. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the scale of the musgrave. Something like that. And let's reduce the scale of the noise texture as well. And let's just add the detail and let's increase the roughness all the way to the max. You can't really see it here, but I assure you it's going to be there. Uh, it's just that the lighting is a bit of an issue. So again, actually, let's increase the scale a little bit. Right. And let's reduce the scale in the mapping value now. Hold on. And I'll just move the light in so we could see a little bit more easily. That. And let's reduce the scaling a little. And just play around with the values until you kind of get something that you like. So I'm going to squish it in a little here like this. Uh, let's increase. Let's decrease the strength a little bit here. Let's add some color. So let's take a color ramp. Let's change the color to kind of like a brownish value like that. Uh, and let's change this to the same color, just a little bit darker. And let's add in one more and change this completely to black. So let's put that into the color and then attach the color ramp back to the noise texture. So we get something like this. Let's increase the strength a little bit. And now we can just play around with these colors to kind of get a result that we like. I'm going to change this to ease to make it look a little better. And just like that, we have a convincing wood texture for our chest. Okay, so now that is done. We want to change some parts of the chest uh, to look more like metal than wood. If you want to keep it a wood, that's completely okay. But I'm going to go for a metal kind of look. So on the right here, let's go to our textures tab and let's add a new one, create new and call it metal or yeah, call it metal. And now let's assign specific vertices on the chest to the metal texture. So let's go into edit mode. Let's go into face select. Let's alt click this loop. Alt, alt shift click this loop. Alt shift click this loop. Alt shift click the loops inside or all the sides here. And let's assign it to the metal value. Um, okay, I like that. Okay, so now let's create our metallic value. So, how do we do this while making it look like kind of like an old rusty chest? Let's go into our shader editor here, into our node editor. Let's add a musgrave texture into a color ramp connect the musgrave to the factor and let's control shift click on the color ramp so we can see what we're working with here okay so as you can see we have the musgrave texture on the white parts of the chest right now so let's decrease the scale all the way down maybe something like 0.7 let's increase the detail all the way up let's uh, decrease the dimension all the way to zero and maybe let's bump up the lessonarity to a value like something like that and of course, we can play around with this value a little bit. We can reduce uh, the scale, but I think I'm going to increase it to something like 0.9. And the black part is going to be our rust and the white part is going to be our metal. So let's connect the principal BSDF back to the surface of the material output. 
and let's connect this color ramp to a mix node set to color and change the uh, and connect the color of the color ramp to the factor of the mix and connect the result of the mix to the base color so again let's change these a and b values let's change a to kind of like a grayish color and let's change the b value to a rust like color something so something like dark orange like that and let's connect the musgrave texture to the metallic value so whatever is on whatever is on uh the rust will be non-metallic and whatever is not that does not have rust will be uh metallic so let's just copy paste this co color ramp here and let's put the musgrave into the roughness as well for the same reasons as earlier the metal parts will look a little shinier and the rust parts will look a little less shiny finally let's add in a bump node into the normal and connect the musgrave texture to the height of the bump node and just reduce the strength a little so just like that we've completed our uh texturing for the chest and let's just copy paste the textures on to the lid of the chest using the same methods And just like that, we have completed the wood and the metal textures for our Mimic. Okay, so now let's get on to texturing the tongue. Now, the tongue is going to be really simple. Let's just add in a new texture here and call it tongue. And let's just change it to kind of like a dark red color, something similar to a tongue. You can do any color you want, but I like red because, you know, it looks a little bit like... A real human tongue which kind of fits in the whole you know mimic name so it's looking a little flat right now so let's increase the roughness because uh, let's reduce the roughness actually because we want the tongue to be kind of shiny and let's add in a bump node connected to the normal let's add in a noise texture and connect the factor of the noise texture to the height of the bump and let's increase the scale to something like 250 so we get all these little bumps along the tongue, but you don't really see them, um, but it, they're there and it'll look really good on the camera. And let's just add a texture coordinate and mapping for the noise texture. So that's all it takes for the tongue. Uh, if obviously, if you want to do more, like you can increase the emissions to something like red, if you want to make the tongue glowing, but I'm not going to do that now. So that is going to be the tongue. The teeth texturing is going to be very simple as well. Let's just add in the teeth texture here and make sure we highlight all these different teeth and click the teeth that we added the texture in and press Control L and link materials. So now all of them have the teeth material. Um, and what we can do is we can reduce the roughness value to make it really shiny. Or maybe we could increase the transmission value a little bit to make it look a little bit like glass, not too much. And let's change the color to something like gray, something like that. And there you have your teeth texture. If you think that the teeth are a little too smooth for your liking, what we can do is we can add in a noise texture and a bump just like we did with the Tongue. So let's connect the factor of the noise texture into the height and connect the normal to the normal of the principal BSDF and set the scale to something like 250. I'm going to set that to 300. Okay, uh, last but not least, we have the eyes. So the eyes are also going to be very simple. I kind of want the mimic to have eyes that are glowing in the dark, kind of waiting for you to pounce on, for it to pounce on you. So let's add in a new material and call it eyes. And again, click this these other set of eyes click the main eye control l link materials and let's change let's increase the emission and change the color to something like red and let's increase the emission strength to something like five and now we have glow in the dark mimic eyes i'll delete the light here 
that are kind of spreading around. So now, oh, almost forgot. Let's also texture the metal keyhole here. We'll just use the same rusty metal texture that we used earlier. And don't forget to also texture the Boolean shape here because it's not completely cut out yet like that. And just like that, you successfully textured your mimic and we're ready to stage it in an environment that makes it look more scary. Okay, so let's get to staging this mimic in an environment that would make it look a little scarier. So let's shift A as always and let's just add a plane and expand it super large. And let's add in a camera for our scene. So shift A and camera. So And go to a position that you kind of like for the camera and press control alt numpad zero and that will kind of bring the camera to view and as always let's go to the view tab and let's go camera to view and let's just scroll out a little here zoom out a little it's kind of somewhere in the middle here's another trick if you want to just view the rendered portion of the scene you can press control b in the viewport just highlight the box like that Okay, cool. So now we have the mimic in its environment. Let's kind of reduce the brightness of the scene so it looks like it's in a dark room. So let's reduce it like that. Maybe not quite to black, but something like that. And let's press shift A and let's add in some lighting. Let's add in an area light and put it above like that. And let's change the color to something a little warmer maybe like orange and increase the strength maybe to 15 yeah 15 looks pretty good and let's just increase the size so it spreads out a little more actually i'm going to reduce that to 12 because i think it's a little too bright let's bring it down like that and you can always just play around as always with the lighting color with the power with the shape um uh, just uh, get a feel for what you want in the scene and, you know, as always, be creative with it. It doesn't always have to follow what I'm doing straight to the T. So what I'm going to do also is I'm going to change the color of the ground here because I think gray is a little bit too strange for an environment like this. So let's click the plane. Let's click add new and let's call this ground. And let's change the color to something maybe like black increasing the roughness but black's absorbing too much of the light so maybe something like really dark brown like that Let's move the light closer maybe to 15 something like that and you know the mimics details on the bottom half isn't really being shown so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna press shift a i'm gonna add another area light R X to bring it up and I'm going to put it inside the mouth. We're going to have it facing up. So R X 180 and let's just increase the size. Let's just put it inside the mimic's mouth. And let's press R X and just kind of rotate it backwards. G Y to bring it forward. And let's look at it back from this view. We're going to change the color, something similar to the orange color and then reduce this to maybe six maybe six is a little too low let's maybe do eight and just like that we can see the mouth of the mimic inside with its long tongue maybe we could try to add a light from the front as well but maybe that takes out too many of the features so again play around with the colors of everything as you will uh, and just kind of find something that you like
So I decided to go with one light in the mouth and two lights on the side, both at 10 watts. One of them being a little bit of that orangey color and the other one being like a whitish color. So with that, we're ready to render the scene. Of course, feel free if you want to add any objects into the scene, any torches, trees, lights, you know, even if you want to change the ground texture to something more like rock, you could do that. But I'm going to leave it at a simple, simple texture just like this. And we're going to render it and we're going to see how it looks. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have successfully modeled and rendered a Dungeons & Dragons style chess mimic right here in Blender 3.4. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you for sticking around till the end, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!